Whether you operate one forklift or thousands, one location or hundreds, the new My Toyota customer portal can help you optimize your operation and material handling equipment. This one-stop, free-to-use platform is designed to help you take control of your information and make smarter decisions, all at the touch of a button. Register and access your data today at my.toyotaforklift.com. That's my.toyotaforklift.com. Does your warehouse waste time and money managing forklift batteries? Enersys can energize your operations with a customized solution, delivering the power you need while minimizing ownership costs. Enersys starts by analyzing your operations and then selecting from their comprehensive range of battery and charger technologies develops a truly optimized system tailored to your needs. Enersys gives you the power to increase productivity and profitability. See how Enersys puts power in motion for you at Enersys.com. The New Warehouse Podcast, hosted by Kevin Lawton, is your source for insights and ideas from the distribution, transportation, and logistics industry. A new episode every Monday morning brings you the latest from industry experts and thought leaders. And now, here's Kevin. Hey, it's Kevin Lawton with the New Warehouse Podcast, bringing you a new episode today. On today's episode, I am going to be joined by Vivek Singh, who is the co-founder at Hopstack. And he's going to tell us a little bit about Hopstack and how it's helping organizations and operations to automate, optimize their management control and execution. And we're going to talk a little bit about software in the fulfillment space as well and how it's been changing over the recent years and and how some of these gaps between legacy systems and and new software and and how these things are are being closed and and how Hopstack kind of fits into that as well. So Vivek, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey Kev, thanks for having me. I'm great. And appreciate you doing the good work for the ecosystem. Not a, not a whole lot of podcasts out there for fulfillment and warehousing tech space. So this is great to be here. Yes, I appreciate that. And, and I appreciate you. Uh, Vivek is actually a, a listener to as well, regular listener, he, he told me. So so I definitely appreciate that and happy to have you on as a guest now too. So so you're the, the co-founder at Hopstack. So tell us a little bit about Hopstack, what it is that Hopstack does and, and kind of how you came to, to found the company and, and start the company. Absolutely. So at Hopstack, we are building what we call it as a warehouse operating system. So it's a SaaS platform that's focused on mm-hmm. automating, optimizing, and digitizing the entire fulfillment operations or the warehousing operations. And the founding of the company was pretty much correlated to my background just to go a few years back. I went to grad school in Missouri, Mm -hmm. post-grad school started working out with Monsanto at their global headquarters in St. Louis. And right from my early days, right, I was working on building analytics and tech solutions for the warehousing and larger logistics domain. Mm -hmm. And that's how I got closer to some of the legacy warehouse softwares right in the initial years of my career, you know, some, some of the legacy ones like SAP, or a Red Prairie, if you may, mm-hmm. uh, manages takes Blue Yonder. So I had the flavor of what the warehousing tech landscape looked like early in the years. Fast forward to 2014, I spent a couple of years working with the supply chain tech and reporting division within Bloomberg in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. So uh, sort of deepened my understanding of fulfillment logistics and how data can be a very powerful tool in optimizing your fulfillment operations. 2016 is after is, is when I actually relocated back to India after spending a decade in the US and in the initial few years started working as a digital transformation consultant for some of the larger corporations here in India and also the greater APAC region. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's when I started to realize how, you know, as the new modern fulfillment in envi- or the retail environment is evolving, the brands and the businesses are becoming more omni-channel. And now they have this complexity of 
not only maintaining the traditional distribution in the retail model or the wholesale model, but also dabbling into D2C or, or the e-commerce space that require a totally different fulfillment and tech capability. Of course, there was this whole emergence of new age e-commerce only brands or marketplaces mm-hmm. that sort of require, again, a, a different different fulfillment strategy altogether. The gap we saw was a lot of the legacy softwares were not built for the modern e-commerce age. And a lot of the modern softwares that are being built were not necessarily in tune with the requirements of the larger B2B world, right? The, the bulk mm-hmm. shipments, the, the, the pallet storage and all of that. And that's the gap we wanted to bridge with, with what, what we call as a digital operating system of the platform. Now with Hopstack, we allow our customers to onboard their B2B or a B2C warehouse, or even if they if they, it's a 3PL business and they operate an Amazon prep center, they can do so as well. Okay. So we are almost made the software agnostic to the business model. Mm. That's that's the key problem that we're addressing. Interesting. So, so uh, I mean, it certainly sounds like from your, your career and your experiences so far, I mean, you've certainly experienced a lot of different systems and, and the legacy systems uh, some of the the big names you, you mentioned in there i'm sure we, we've all heard of and you know as the fulfillment landscape has, has been changing and you mentioned a lot of companies switching to this more of an omni-channel setup you know those softwares not always have the the flexibility i think it's some of the new scenarios that we're looking at or, or seeing in the marketplace that you mentioned there so so i, I mean seeing those softwares and and working with those softwares in the past how how do you think that they have kind of struggled or or limited companies in a way in trying to adapt or or adopt these new omni-channel strategies yeah i think it goes back to some of the limitations Mm -hmm. uh, that i was talking about the legacy systems and i would dive a little bit deeper into that most, I mean, if you look at today's business environment, right, the businesses today have to be omnichannel. I mean, they, they are selling through the retail stores, they're selling through online marketplaces, through their own web stores, or even social channels, right? So all right. being able to sell on multiple channels require a complex fulfillment environment. That also means that you require a software and a tech that is not only flexible, that is agile, not only agile, but also very open in nature and what i mean by open is is digitally connected to all the players in the ecosystem right the challenge with the legacy softwares were they were built more for the 90s and the 2000s that operated on in an on-prem environment Mm -hmm. there was no need to have an api connectivity with the external world the edi connections worked fine with your retailer or a wholesaler and your carriers, right? You you didn't have to do a real-time rate shopping. You didn't have to sell on multiple marketplaces. And hence, you did not need a connectivity to those sales channels. So those softwares were not really very connected. Mm-hmm. The, second, the second most important thing was neither were the softwares are very agile and flexible. For example, if I'm launching as a business, if I'm a, if I'm a retailer and I'm launching a new facility or new wear fulfillment facility in, let's say, in a different region, it would take me at least six months, if not more, to get that facility onboarded on the, on my existing warehouse software, right? So that was also not in tune with how fast the world is moving today, right? Look at what happened in 2020. Almost there was no time for businesses to move online very fast, right? Which required a certain agility from their softwares. These were some of the limitations that hindered the businesses to grow fast but in in some of the cases they were also the the mid market merchants were also struggling to survive right which is why i think that there was almost a need for a software that can be more open be well connected to the marketplaces to the web store platforms to the shipping carriers all across built on the principles of cloud first mm-hmm. cloud first environment and that is also something that also has a native built in intelligence into it right so the legacy systems were built for being a system of record right you were required to enter the information and you would get your reports out of it 
right? Today, the systems are required to be a little more predictive and intelligent in nature, right? I should be able to see what my optimal picking path is for a group of orders inside a warehouse. How should I be planning my labor for the holiday season? What sort of carrier choices should I be making if I have to optimize on my shipping cost? How should my orders be routed across the network? How should my inventory be placed in inside the facility? These are some of the decisions that coherently should be made by the platform in a way because the, the platform is storing a lot of data. And that is another thing that was some of these legacy platforms were lacking, mm. right? So this is why there is now we are on the cusp or in a defining moment where almost a new category of warehousing st- softwares are emerging. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting, and I, I think you know you touch on a lot of the the limitations there of the the legacy systems, and you know I think just as we've grown as customers and and just people in our everyday lives expecting you know more things in in the cloud, right? I, I think you know industry is is following suit, and we're we're finding that you know software is becoming more cloud based, as as you mentioned there, and and that's certainly allowing more more flexibility and what we can do and, and what that software can do. And uh, so uh, I'm curious now for the hop stack because, you know, a lot of what I'm seeing out there is like these softwares that are, are coming in and, and they're almost like coming on, on top of like what's existing already in your in your company, right? And, and putting everything together. So so it, you called, I think you called hop stack in the beginning there a, a warehouse operation system. Is, is that correct? Is that what you said? Yeah, an operating system, a warehouse operating system. Right. So, so if you look at a warehouse operating system, uh, as you're calling it, I mean, how does that ask or how does that look against, you know, what we would traditionally call a warehouse management system or a warehouse execution system? Is is this like a, a standalone that we're putting in place or is this now coming like on top of existing softwares and, and bringing them together? How does that work? No, that's a, that's a great question, Kevin. So if you think of of a large enterprise or a Fortune 100 or a Fortune 500 company, mm-hmm. and that's certainly not our playground today. They have the luxury and the firepower to deal with multiple systems and mm-hmm. have an army of consultants and engineers to to maintain and expand those systems, right? So they would use a warehouse management system as a system of record for their warehouses. Then they will bring in a warehouse execution system to add the intelligence layer on top of their WMS. They would have an inventory management system, and then they will have a, a ship Shipping software to manage do rate shopping and label manifest generation. Then on the other hand, uh, on the upstream layer, they will also have a distributed order management software that can integrate with various sales channels and do the intelligent inventory allocation to order or facility allocation to a particular order or route an order, right? So there, these are five or six different softwares that we're speaking about. Works well for the enterprise, not so much when you are a, a small business doing about you know single digit million or up to let's say hundred million in revenue, mm-hmm. right? What you would want if you're operating your own facility as a business owner to have one package software that can take care of all of these. Right, right from receiving yeah. your orders from various sales channels, making those intelligent routing and location decisions, then hitting the warehouse, and from warehouse the software should be able to guide your entire inbound and outbound operations intelligently, and then also prepare the final shipment and dispatch in a most optimal way possible. Right, so you want one layer to do all of that. You don't necessarily, as a small business, have the or a mid market company have the bandwidth to consolidate data from multiple systems, you know, deal with silos or even onboard a implementation or a system integration partner, which is which is where we are different, right? So that's mm-hmm. why we create this one category of software so that that serves as an operating system for your entire, entire fulfillment operations. You do not, I mean, as a small business or a mid-market company, you do not need to onboard a new system. You do not need to go and add a warehouse execution layer if tomorrow you wish to deploy, let's say, a picking robot in your environment, right? The, the mm. system allows native connectivity to a lot of those picking robots out there, and, and you can onboard a picking robot in, in less than two weeks, which is why an operating system as opposed to traditionally what we're called as the warehouse management system. Hmm. Interesting. So so it's not as heavy implementation as, as what you would see from a traditional system, which I think is definitely a, a big thing because implementation can some be something that can certainly 
drag you down for a little bit and be a bit taxing so so i I mean in that sense and on the implementation thought you know if we look at how you know these legacy systems that we we've talked about here and and discussed and and the the gaps that they you know have have come up because of the way business is is shifting and, and business models are changing when we look at those those gaps and and companies start to realize you know okay like this system is is not doing everything i needed to do in order to have the flexibility i need within my new fulfillment model or, or the way that I'm, I'm moving towards as a business how do companies start to transition now out of this legacy setup into something that's more i guess modern in, in a sense or, or cloud-based like such as hopstack like how how do they start to make that switch and ensure that you know they're doing the right thing in order to support their evolving business model yeah, so I, before I touch base upon that, I want to expand on what you mentioned around implementation times, right? Sure. That has certainly been a painful issue when it comes to a lot of B2B or enterprise softwares, right? You cannot the, the, you cannot just onboard an ERP system or, or a software warehouse management system without having pretty solid or a strong implementation partner. And traditionally, what we have seen is implementing any of the the, the big names, WMS or a legacy WMS out there is is a solid six to 12 month NDVR, if not more, right? And that is that is something that, and of course they have their own price tag, which is which makes it a little bit out of reach for a company that is doing perhaps 150 million in revenue. And that's where we are envisioning and designing the product in such a way uh, that there's a lot of no code approach to configuring a lot of options in the platform. Mm-hmm. And that helps us to implement the platform in a much faster time than a regular WMS or any other WMS out there. So for example, we have had the longest implementation time that we have had is for a company doing 200 million plus in revenue or mm-hmm. across mm-hmm. multiple facilities. The implementation time was around 90 days. Uh, on an average, nice. on an average, we do go live between eight to ten weeks. Mm-hmm. And one of the internal goals that we have had is how can we cut this time down even further by continue to build upon the product capabilities and the implement our ideal internal target is to bring it down between four to six weeks. Right, mm-hmm. that's where we want to get to. And that will sort of also expand our reach across multiple customer segments as well, because then it will start to become very self-serve in its own right. On the other thing that you mentioned about the transition, right? So we today deal with two kind of two category of customers. One is obviously someone that has always operated on spreadsheets, emails, pen and paper and whatnot, right? And you'll be surprised how incredibly untouched by technology the 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 world of warehouse and fulfillment ops is right so that that that's a, a customer we often get where you know they are onboarding their first version of tech and they are evaluating multiple softwares and we end up often winning the battle in the rfps we are competing and that's primarily because of us being of one software that takes care of the entire fulfillment stack the second category we obviously deal with is the transitioning customers, which is what you touched upon. We do have customers that were using a bare-bone WMS or a WMS bolt-on provided by their ERP vendors. Mm. And and they have certainly, as a business, outgrown, the level, outgrown those WMSs, right? Now they have multiple sales channels. They have different facilities. They work with 3PL partners, and they ship pallets and each is both. Which certainly is not that the certainly something that this WMSs can't handle, and in these cases, our implementation times tend to be longer because there is obviously an element of transitioning data out from their existing system to our system, and and there is a process of data migration involved during the implementation process. But we yeah. also have seen that the customers have realized about 30 to 40 percent benefit over their existing systems in terms of fulfillment throughput whether it be their picking efficiency whether it be their order lead times or number of orders fulfilled per day they've certainly realized those gains 
while switching over from their existing system to ours. We'll be back after a quick break. You hear a lot about supply chains these days, because if the past couple years have taught us anything, it's that an efficient, well-managed supply chain is absolutely critical to keeping businesses successful and consumers happy. I'm Will Haywood, and I host a podcast called All Business, No Boundaries, where we talk about supply chains, how they work, what happens when they don't, and the innovations that are redefining what's possible in the world of logistics. Join me for insightful interviews with thought leaders and industry experts. We discuss how optimizing supply chains can break down the barriers that are holding businesses back. That's All Business, No Boundaries by DHL Supply Chain. Listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Hmm. Interesting, yeah. yeah. And I think it, it it's huge, the implementation, the ease of that transition as well. I mean, as you... As you mentioned, you know, you look at you know traditional implementations, and and, and I've kind of said this on the, on the podcast before, but the you know implementation can be a pretty scary word, right? For mm-hmm. for uh, warehousing operations, and yeah. you know having issues along an implementation can be pretty costly to your business. And you know, I've, I've been involved in some, and you know, I've had some issues where can't ship and if you can't ship like you know that's <laughs> that's like catastrophe right in the warehouse right so you know being able to to create that ease and and get to a faster implementation i, I think is certainly a a plus and a mm-hmm. faster transition and easier transition as well because you know you look at i think some companies and they get stuck in these legacy systems because yeah. they're just scared of the overall time it's going to take and the potential issues in a implementation. And, you know, they've been using this system for, you know, so many years and, you know, it's, it works okay. You know, we're not having right. issues. If we switch over, we could have issues or maybe it's not going to work the way it's going to work or there's going to be an issue when we implement and all these things. So, you know, with uh, with that being said, and obviously you, you kind of address some of the, the concerns there and talking about how you're continuing to try and reduce the amount of time it takes to, to implement. But, but for people who are, are thinking in that way and maybe a little scared to try something new potentially, like, I mean, what would you say to kind of ease their their mind and and get them thinking of a way in a way that you know it, it is the right step forward yeah i think today it's almost i mean if you go back three years i mean having us having a software running your fulfillment ops m- may have been a nice to have but today it's almost a necessity right we you, you i mean think of the the changing consumer behavior you know if they're used mm-hmm. to shopping shopping on Amazon and expecting the product to be delivered the next day, if not the same day, they do expect that from every merchant that they do business with, mm. right? And the merchants now need to be able to sort of match that promise, right? If they have to compete with the big box retailers, they need they, they also, if they are operating their own facility, if they're working with a 3PL partner, the partner as well as them need to match that customer experience of being able to ship in two days or less. Right. And how do they do that? They have to have the right combination of people, process, and technology. And technology mm-hmm. is as important element as it has ever been in, in the fulfillment space, which is why, you know, I think uh, that bridge has been crossed that, you know, almost everyone is on board with the idea of that, yes, they need a software to able to match that Amazon-like experience for fulfillment. Mm. And in terms of ease of implementations, right, so we certainly have an onboarding team that handholds almost every customer that we talk to during this process. And we we also built in a two-week hyper care once we go live, right? And that hyper care is, again, ensuring that everything works as they expect it should work. And if there are any issues, we obviously jump on the call. I mean, the team is split across three continents. So we, we have the flexibility, we have the ability to be around the clock support, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the most recent feedback that we have gotten from our customer is that the, you know, the, the 78 year old grandpa of the business owner was, you know, happily uses Hopstack, even though he has never used iPhone. <laughs> 
throughout his life or has never used technology but he walks in helps his grandson out by doing a pick pack ship mm-hmm. on 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 the obstax app on his uh, pda so that sort of us feel very vindicated in terms of the hypothesis we had in in enabling the in improving the customer experience for our end customers right mm. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a a great point there, and a, a great example too at the the ease of use, right? If somebody can walk in that is not necessarily very tech savvy, and and still be able to to figure it out and and, and do the job like a pick and pack, I think that's a really important thing, and that certainly helps a company be able to use their their labor pool a little more and, and be more flexible on. on hiring and and the skill sets that that they need in in hiring individuals to do those things. So so definitely a great example there. And so now let's talk a little bit about before we kind of wrap up here. I mean the software, you know, is one thing, but you know, software I think is is changing a lot within our world, our industry. But on the other hand, you know, we also have the the hardware and especially the robotics and the automation as well. That's certainly changing and becoming more prevalent, and even in in most cases, is almost becoming a a necessity to be able to do those things, like you said, keep up with the the consumer expectation and be able to do those two day deliveries, quicker deliveries things of that nature so so how how do you how do you keep in mind and, and how does hopstack kind of ensure that you know the the software itself is keeping up with additional complexities that are being introduced into fulfillment operations via automation or, or robotics yeah and and warehouse warehouses are an environment where the the software and hardware act much more frequently than any other environment out there and that's why it is almost imperative for today's warehousing software to be very seamlessly integrated with any sort of physical or robotic hardware or automation devices because today it, it's not the time of where you can have warehouse associates walking around the fulfillment floor and and doing data entries because that's not their primary job so you mm-hmm. literally have to create a proxy or create a proxy of how easily you can capture that data from any other device out there right be be it on the the bin or the shelf or, or as simple as scanning a, a barcode uh, mimicking a data entry mm. right or, or on a higher end how can your interface with picking robots or or asrs systems or conveyor belts to pass that instructions to those machines and receive confirmation back so this is an extremely important aspect of any warehousing software out there today now the way the legacy systems have solved this problem by obviously spending you know the the, the big companies spend or the enterprises spend hundreds and thousands of dollars if not millions on system integrations system integrators to come in and write that custom integration with the, between the hardware and the software and that obviously wouldn't work out for smaller companies companies doing less than billion dollar in revenue in that case they are always looking for native integration capabilities that their software can provide so for example we had a customer or a prospect that was actually onboarding an AMR picking robot for their facility and they had almost finalized their WMS but they ended up choosing us just because we had a pre-built connector to that AMR and uh-huh. that pre-built uh, that pre-built connector enabled them to onboard that device in in less than 4 weeks right which uh, even which essentially takes months mm-hmm. uh, this, just to emphasize this fact you know there's this very famous line from an ex amazon executive who worked very closely with the the kiva robotics team he said only deploying robots in in inside a warehouse is only 5% of the job mm. the remaining 95% is actually getting to work getting them to work and 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 sending and transmitting data and integrate with the system right so that is that is something we are continuously building capabilities to uh, integrate with more and more modern physical automation devices robotic devices be it pick to light devices or pick by vision smart glasses mm. or good person robots or asrs systems or conveyor belts we have pre built connectors for some of the largest ones out there which means you know our customers can also once they on board they can have uh, this 
integration library and they can just pick and choose and say hey you know if you guys are already integrated let me on board if if ever i'm going to on board a automation device or a robotic device i'll probably pick it from this library so that it is easier for me to on board them right so that also certainly plays in our favor but any other software out there also needs to think very deeply about making the integration very easier because without that it it becomes you're almost always believing that you know your warehouse will always be an environment mm-hmm. that will be operated by humans which certainly not be the case i think there will be a solid mix of humans and automation devices working in tandem hmm. yeah very interesting and I, and you know i think it's great the fact that you have the pre built in I, i mean it almost sounds like in a sense like i guess the easiest way i could translate it is like you you're looking at like like google chrome it's like a, an extension that you can add on to google chrome and you already have like these built in things where you can integrate with these robotics companies and right. and i think that's that's a huge plus because it, it's not only showing that you know you're able to bring the software in but then in, in the future as a company if you want to bring in robots which is pretty inevitable i think as you mentioned there i mean we're certainly going to see you know a mix of robots and, and humans i think in the the future no matter what but you have that option now and you don't have to go out and and figure something out different right further down the yeah. the road so so i definitely love the the flexibility and kind of the simplicity in a in a sense that you're, you're bringing to a software here in the the warehousing space so so very interesting to to hear about hopstack and and some of the the challenges that hopstack is addressing and and trying to provide solutions for as well in our environment so so really appreciate you coming on the show and and talking about this if if people are interested in learning more about hopstack and and getting into the the hopstack world how can they do that certainly they can they can just get on to a website www.hopstack.io and either sign up to speak uh, speak to uh, one of the product specialists or they can send me an email vivek@hopstack.io right it's, it's pretty simple and then we we could be in touch and once again appreciate you having me here given Yeah, absolutely and we'll definitely put all that information at the newwarehouse.com as well. So Vivek, thank you once again for your your time on the show today. You've been listening to the New Warehouse podcast with Kevin Lott. Subscribe and check us out online at the newwarehouse.com. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you want more content from the new warehouse, check out our new video series called All Hands on LinkedIn. Just search for The New Warehouse on LinkedIn and follow along.